both sides are, are, are short on that. I mean, I, Secret is okay. But o, OG, if, uh, OG needs some needs some shorter cooldown disabled. They really do. You could, uh, I could also... Oh, oh, I know it. Treant. Treant offlane. Out. Okay? Seb would do it. Ten seconds remaining. That is... Treant offlane would actually be nuts here. Because that gives them remaining. the area of effect OG control that they need. Fifth. You sort of have a point and click. Like, it just, it just works. And it allows you to know. hit a timing. That's, they that need that somebody too... to buy auras. Yeah, they need somebody to buy auras. Why not just go Centaur? So, so they're going to take out the bound to ban. If this is offlane tree, I'm walking off. I'm like, okay. I'm dropping right, the mic. Okay. Okay. Right, aura builder, super safe. That's a nice OG draft. Yeah. And if it, it's perfect because. You look at the one, the first three picks of Secret. Wait, they AoE all, Silence owns. Yeah, you just, <laughs> I mean, if you can get on top of them, you're going to win these engagements. If Night Stalker can run into the fight with that silence active, yeah. uh, it, that's It's the problem. perfect hero to play, to captain and shot call on as an offlaner. Like, I believe that. When you're a Night Stalker player, your cooldown is the one your team is playing around. Your vision, your, your movement, like you are There's literally quarterbacking the game. Is that mid tango or is it uh, didn't, I didn't. I genuinely thought we would only see this from one team at this event. Oh no no no! Uh, and that would be Ice Ice Ice, of course. No uh, no. no. Uh, the, a lot of teams it, have but... now started running mid pango. Is this mid pango yeah. or Zai pango? Ah, uh, absolutely I, no idea. I think this is. Pango. I think it's the Zai pango yeah. and mid one last. I mean, it has it has been mostly. Um, interesting draft from both teams. Yep, which, I like uh, it. Which ones do you like better, though? I, I love what OG did. Yeah. I think that they have not just, like, the matchup advantage on individual heroes, but the way the team fights are going to go down, it's, like, they, they're they going to win the mid-game. They're always going to have vision advantages. Secret, to win this, has to play, like, near flawlessly, and Spectre's got to go off. Like, Secret is very much a, like, they're going to try and drop the Meteor, okay? Mm -hmm. You've got this window with Warlock, Golem, Spectre ult. You need to find kills immediately. Otherwise, OG just pick you apart. They outfarm yep. you around the map yep. and just... I get, die. It once again comes down to we can kill your heroes, but you can't kill ours. And mm -hmm. I think OG showed in game one that they're playing at that level. They can compete. I like them a lot. Yep. All right. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, time to head over to our commentary team. Uh, once more, we join Capitalist and Toby One for game number two. Thanks, Red. Yeah, How you doing? It's, uh, we're doing great. I thought that first oh, game was, was very good, very fun. Yeah. 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 Yeah, much it's, much it's, to Kyle's annoyance, actually. I don't think he thought it was going to be that good. Kyle's always annoyed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was at least nice to see that, like, OG actually stepped up. Because it would have been yeah. really disappointing if we had a game where it's like, you know what, we're the ma winners of TI. Yeah, yeah, Can't yeah. win versus winners of Major. Like, you don't want to, like, do, have the, the <laughs> TI4, like, post TI4 newbie conversation. The TI winners are just gonna bomb out every single time. There's no yeah. hype to it, but here, yeah. like OG, like they, you know, a little bit of rough patch after TI, but yeah. good start to ESL 1 Katowice and hopefully a good finish for the series against Secret going yeah. into this game too. That drop am, looks fun for it. I'm pretty optimistic, honestly, for um, them for this game too. I think it's actually a pretty sick Night Stalker game. You know, my, my you know, I said <laughs> Nyx's has it. I was like, I don't think you could run Core Nyx's has it, but it'd be a sick game for it, right? Yeah, um, but it's core, a, core Night Stalker, however. That's... It's the same kind of hero, right? It really inhibits these intelligence cores. Um, it, it is a tempo-based offlaner. Um, you want this hero, like Kyle was saying, this is a great hero to be able to captain from. It, Basically, mm. your team follows your timings. And if you look at this Night Stalker, first of all, he's not going to have a bad laning phase, I don't think, for his, his daytime. He should be absolutely great in that regard. On top of that, he's got some supports that cannot stand against him. Crystal Maiden and Warlock just fall over super quickly. And he's got some cores that he's matched up, both Pango as well as Lashrak, um, who are naturally a little bit squishy. Night Stalker loves that. He's still very much an assassin-based hero. Even if he scales better into late game than he used to because of the attack damage from his ultimate, he still wants to be able to get on top of somebody and kill them in two seconds. OG's going to have a little bit of troubles with some of the bounty runes as uh, Team Secret contesting them pretty hard. In fact, they Holy claim cow. all four bounty runes. This is actually because we're looking at a support enigma. Uh, he's Holy actually... Cow. He was... Denying up, well, actually, I thought he was going to deny up one of the creeps from the bottom lane, but he's taking his sweet time to do so. Uh, and to, to solve the question of the panel before, it is, in fact, as you see on your screen, a Xyla Shrak, and it's a mid-one Pangalier. This is why you probably maybe saw mid-one with a very large smirk on his face 
just before they went into the game. Yeah, this is uh, similar to the matchup that he had before um, against Liquid, where he was matched up against uh, a Shadow Fiend. When you play this mid Pangolier, um, you do like heroes that are, again, naturally squishy. Pango and, uh, or excuse me, uh, Pugna, as well as SF, both share that common trait, and they're also very susceptible to the lucky shot. Both, you know, even if you, it's just a disarm, the slow and just being able to get on top of them and deal damage, um, Pango's great at that. And I, I think on top of that, Leshrac was already a bit answered from the draft by OG. Yeah. Like, Leshrac, think of what he had to go into. He's going to be going into Pugna, Night Stalker, and Animage. Mm -hmm. Three cores that counter him pretty heavily. Well, such an early pick as well from Secret. Yeah. Like, like you kind of knew this hero was going to get pretty heavily counted anyway. The panel was talking about, like, oh, the flex oh, value yes. of him being a support. I think he's God. a garbage four, but a three, he might be good. He spites up on top and bottom both pl both uh, teams. Yeah, everyone's getting super yeah. low. Pango super low. <laughs> you see this top fight that, like, I'm expecting someone to die eventually. But Wait, you, th you think it's Yabsa? Like, it's a Crystal Maiden. He's like, oh, my movement speed sucks. So what have I got? I've got boots. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is this is Yabsa's mindset. But the boots allowed him to actually duke it around in the fog of war in the tree line. So without them, he probably would have died as well. But it's the nuke damage from Topson. Maybe this is where I feel a little bit happier about OG's draft, where they actually have Topson playing this mid nuker his his pugnal or his zeus's uh maybe i feel less happy about this because topson no he's got to crepify and blast he's only going to use to crepify however curry is bringing out double mangoes as well as the salve so he'll be back up to full got a little lucky on the lucky shot but that's why it's lucky silences. right yeah, but it is its name uh it's pretty interesting they put the warlock here in this top lane warlock really is not a trine lane hero but simultaneously what is he going to be doing in that safe lane against a daytime night stalker let me tell you, Toby, that no. hero has no claws whatsoever when it comes to laning phase. For the first five minutes, he does nothing. So mm -hmm. he, Nisha is going to be fine farming against him. He's only going to soak experience away from Nisha. So uh, I guess they feel like it's best to give Nisha this uh, solo experience. He'll get a faster level six as a result. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he rotates down when nighttime happens. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to play the Spectre uh, because obviously the moment nighttime comes out, we actually have a Night Stalker with level three Void. He becomes a, a real, real threat. So they're going to have to do something about it. But. but but then they commit so heavily to try and influence the other lanes. Like this top lane, the Tornado of No Tail has already caused so many problems from Secret. They want to go as initiation on the Anti-Mage and they can't get it. It's, a, it's an aggressive tri-lane versus a dual safe lane. Remember, we haven't even seen, and I cannot, I cannot actually believe this is happening. It's Enigma in the jungle. Like, uh, yes. this is... <laughs> This just doesn't happen anymore. It, it's been happening lately. It's been happening uh, in a lot of pubs lately. Uh, I think it happened in some pro game. Maybe it was that we play at some point in time. Uh, it just doesn't feel. It's being picked it up. It doesn't feel legit enough just because of the nerf that came to the to the neutrals. I mean, the so the slowly but surely with the combination of the focus on the range creep and how much gold you get out of that which mm -hmm. you know the deny mechanic of enigma uh -huh. is super good against that you could see yeah. what he's doing here, right? says you just tp to the tier 2 tower on top lane to get that deny on the range creep exactly you don't need to use the enigma to like the actual idol on focus to kill a neutral creep you take a range creep away from one of the lanes and then bring those Eidolons into the jungle itself. So it, it, you still have an impact on the laning phase, a pretty good one, taking away the range creep, which is such a big impact of uh, a lane creep net worth. That, and then you're still able to get some pretty decent levels because they have changed the, the neutral value a little bit, where it's a little bit better for you than it was previous. Yeah, I, I've been watching it too as well, JJ. <laughs> Just waiting for Jirax to mess up a little bit of micro. <laughs> it was one hit from that Hellbear, like that close to death. He is pushing the limit of this hero. It's a good thing Bloodseeker is not in the game, or else everyone else will be losing their lanes right now. Another big thing is that Night Stalker, um, he just doesn't have a whole lot to do during daytime. And he doesn't farm very efficiently during daytime either. The Midas patch, very helpful to him. With this this rage of everyone going Midas's, it's the, the perfect item for a Night Stalker because, you know, obviously you can't go any other accelerating item. You can't go a Mjolnir or Battle Fury or anything mm -hmm. like well, that. Nerdtel's in trouble. Zai, just too easy with the damage to come in from that level 2 Edict, but that's why he's trying to turn around with the help of the Anti-Mage to try and find their own kill. Zai will still finish off Nerdtel's ILTW went the other direction. Jirax moves over. It's a level 1 mouth for stun, so it's not enough work, but then again, when you micro up the Wild Wing, he just can't move. Zai on the retreat. One more blink forward. Should be to finish the job and that's exactly what will happen the awkwardness of this trend lane the combination of enigma taking away range creeps the the enchanter is bringing a neutral creep into it and them also just not being able to do enough damage to this enemy he's top cs despite aggro trying lane 
you know, this this Warlock, they just didn't really have a place for their supports in this. They finally do bring Puppy down to this bottom lane again mm -hmm. as nighttime comes up. The, the Warlock <laughs> Spectre is a classic <laughs> duo because all you need to do is just keep giving the Spectre health and... But look at, look at the heavy in lane. look at the heavy rotation. It's like okay, so yeah. Seb feels good, no tower feels good because we hit the first nighttime phase, and Girax comes in to help him add pressure towards the tower. There's no D push from Team Secret. Puppy's already on the run, but Seb he'll run with him. Those wings are pretty aerodynamic when it comes to the nighttime. Voids off cooldown in a second, but he won't use it as uh, he needs to turn it back around because Pango mid one. Here we go again. Team Secret rotate their mid laner off. And now he's going to do some serious lifting. No tell, completely isolated. Yapsaw, he'll end up surviving his mid one, also gets the conversion kills too. So both of the supports that are meant to help enable Seb's lane have actually kind of swung at the opposite direction. And Pango plays exactly the way that mid one has been playing for Team Secret, right? And this very much, he's a space creating core. He moves around super early. You've got a low cooldown, very impactful ult for team fights. It just kind of fits to everything that he's been doing lately with, on these Ember Spirits. Pango mid, on top of that, another thing about it is that Pango mid with the damage items that you get with a Javelin into, to, uh, into Maelstrom, your timing is just a little off as an offlaner. Unless you just get like a really dominant offlane, you're just not going to get those farming items fast enough. It's going to slow down your team fight items. But as a mid, you get the Javelin super fast. You get the levels required for you to still be imp uh, impactful for team fights, and this will allow you to be able to get, you know, a Guardian Grease, which is typically the item you go for with uh, the mid Pango after Melch. So, great things for Pango, great things for Team Secret, but there is still up this fight. We'll go to the ticking time bomb, but it's bottom lane. Spectre trying to run away. Thompson just sucking the life out. That's why he has a spectral horn himself away. Jumps up and down, and then up towards the top lane. So, it's in the hands of Anti Mage. You can actually find this kill on Denisha. It's it started on bottom, but with the Mana Void available, it's here, up on top lane for Nisha. So he and just used his ultimate to deliver a kill <laughs> straight to Animage's door. He's like, yep. sick. Hey, this is, you know that, that uh, Riddick? It's Riddick, right? The, the first, the, the, well, the second movie, if you're not going to count Pitch Black. Uh -huh. Thompson's going to drain him out, but it's like, uh, do I kill myself? To, to the Grandmaster, or do I do I kill myself to this douchebag over here? You know what? I'll I'll take the Master. I'll, like I'll, I'll I'll let him have control of my entire army and world. I'm not gonna lie. I had no idea where that analogy was going at first, Toby. And I know the Riddick movies, but I see where you're going. With yeah, that. I see where you're going. It's like with that. who do I want to give my army to? Well, but I'm not sure if you wanted to give it to the enemy. <laughs> you, really, you really did it. Like like obviously a bad mistake was made. Riddick was not ready to govern. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's the enemy who was the ticking time bomb I wanted to say before the fight was going to begin. Like this enemy just is drastically moving towards his battle fury, and can the pango do anything about him? All this farm that's good for Team Secret doesn't deal with the pan uh, with the anti mage this game. He will eventually. Oh no, he didn't get the silence for the lucky shot. So Thompson lays a ton of damage into Nisha, but fortunately was able to get out of range just in time. One of the big things is, is Pango is very effective against Animage because you have an innate silence. And then on top of that, you've got Chain Stones with the Rolling Thunder. So Animage is going to have a difficult time with mid one eventually. So they will have that answer mm -hmm. uh, for sort of like that mid game area where he's got Battle of Fury and he's building into his Manta. Mm -hmm. um, the Pango will be able to hunt on Animage around the map. So they, they will be able to kind of deal with that. It's still the timing is going to be scary. Um, just as, you know, Kyle was saying, the enemy was a great pickup because not only answered the Leshrac, it also answers the Spectre. You know, we were talking about it backstage. It's like, yeah. the Spectre gets his Radiance, yeah, but enemy is like, I've already got Battle Fury, I've got my Manta, and I'm soon gonna have five items before you have three. Wow, Mid One's really committing to try and kill off Pagner, and he's able to do so, support from the Crystal Maiden. Well, Seb's trying to get a bit more of a wrap up himself, but he's, he's frostbitten up. He can't take this fight too well. With the help of no tell, maybe he'll feel a little bit more confident. No tell's hunting the support kill. But that's that power spike for mid one where he feels real confident just halfway up the lane and commits his rolling thunder. Yeah, just like he when he played against the Shadow Fiend, right? Like Shadow Fiend was so dependent on magic damage nukes. And then you have this Pango who gets on top of you, has a chance to, to silence you. And if he doesn't, well, he goes into rolling thunder anyway, and you can't do any magic damage to him. So you're going to have even worse problems for Pugna, fortunately. That is going to be a great escape for Zai, who's building into a rod of Atos. So he's going to set himself up. And also split the bounty runes 50-50. So no one really gets any kind of advantage. It was the 10-minute bounty rune fight that in game one, everyone wanted to take. In game two, everyone just appeared to be happy to accept the status quo. 
Any mage, top of the net worth board, but a lot of OG are right behind him. Yeah, but he's he's number one net worth, and the Battle Fury is very close to completion. We're 400 yeah. gold away from Battle Fury. They've given him the bottom lane, and they're even giving him an Alpha Wolf to get a little bit extra. Tops it again. Him. Yeah, he's dead. Nice hit from mid one. Okay, well, he should be dead. Nope. The drain out. Okay, now he is dead. Mid one didn't want to commit the swashbuckle at the end just to ensure it straight up. Yeah, there's Pulse Nova and Edict over. doing the work. Untouchable doesn't help you against that, but that's the reason why you've got the Nature's Attendance. He'll get a little bit more distance up. Seb's in the neighborhood. Nisha, you need to kind of slow down Nisha so he can't keep the chain going. Zai will miss the stun, but no time will finally go down. That'll help Nisha. Looks like he's going to be double Wraith Man straight into Yasha, so they're going to make sure that they don't have this like kind of awkward window where Nisha's very weak. Builds into an early stat build. I'm not sure if he's actually going to go Diffusal Blade for this game or Radiance. I feel like Diffusal Blade is better for you in the matchup against the uh, enemy. Does Radiance even really like help against what OG has? Well, OG are on the hunt. Now smoke up. Seb's going to be the first bit of bait. Starts over on Zai. They need a stun available. Jirax, he's this time going to get in range on Zai. Get the Malpha Sun off, allowing Seb to get the kill. They wanted more, but Nisha quickly jumps away while mid one and Yabsaw combo together to kill off ILTW. He's tearing it up this game. That's actually the big such a difference, a right, between these two mid laners in both game one and game two. Top 10 had kind of a rough time with his Monkey King transitioning out, having a rough time again here directly against mid one, just getting full on countered. But OG did bounce back very nicely with some of their team fight, and they've got a great script here. Right, yep. Toby, you could see kind of the one, two, three buildup that they've got going for them. They've got this Enigma and the Pugna. They're going to be able to take a lot of towers early. The, that tower gold is naturally just going to speed up the Animage's timing. He's mm -hmm. going to have a faster Battle Fury. That means he's going to have a faster Manta. And we're going to have that, like, you know, five-slotted Animage mm -hmm. who is just can't be dealt with but he's taking point. he's taking his time he's only just managed to work back up to where we last left him off yeah building into the battle fury because he died inside the jungle and og didn't take the tier one tower it's delayed that battle fury timing now mid one's trying to get his own run out does jirex just commit he doesn't have the mana for the black hole so he can't commit on that front moves just far enough away from the from the edge there's only no tell who will get stunned up as mid one wants to keep the run going and a quick swash buckle down and away from the blast of topson Middle tower. Yeah, but I, ILTW is not going to be happy with no. just just the last one to two minutes where it's been dead time, so no yeah. farm time. And Pango, for a short period of time, actually was number one in net worth. Yeah, we were watching that chase in top lane, but the much more important kill was that Animage. And, you know, I, I totally missed it too. And it's, I'm curious to see how he got picked off. It's hugged up under the tower. Puts Nether Ward down. Mid one doesn't really want to be involved in this. Watch Buckle away. They'll cop the damage from it, and with an enchant, they try and slow him down once again, but a quick shield crash up the hill. Plus, this is mid one. Very difficult to lock down, especially when you give him such a versatile hero like Pango. Yeah, and look at that. He's actually thinking about going for another javelin, so really committing to a heavy damage build for this Pango. And I can't say that I hate it just because the big burst damage is so good against both that Pugna as well as the Animage. Oh, if you connect him up with the Fatal Bond, it's like, all right, boys, you want to get into this damage pool? Let's get into this damage pool. Zai's going to jump underneath the tower. Netherboard is down, so Zai turns on the Pulse Nova. Oh. Happy just to fight it out. Thompson needs to drain faster than that, but he cannot do it. Zai, oh, Malifa stunned up, but mid one's free just to jive underneath the tier two tower. Quickly voided, but Seb low on life. They still do not want to bring the Anti-Mage into this fight. This will be the worst thing for OG if that happens. The tier one tower is still up and fighting. Zai is low on life. I don't have any real vision of him making that move, however. That looks like it'll just be a straight tier one tower in the mid lane to fall. Yeah, it's looking like this combination now of... I mean, to be honest, Zai isn't much of an impact. It's mostly just mid one. It just seems too tough for OG to fight into. So they're going to definitely have to wait until this next night time, which is coming up. Seb's going to be able to secure this one top bounty, and then his team will secure the two at the bottom. I so, say, yeah, if Jirax hangs around, but now he's using the Wild Wing to scout out if anyone moves over because he did get that Dominator as his first item. The top five, well, it's mid one, Zion, mid one. Mid Looking one. to get all the bounty runes up. Seb moves four, but hello, Rod of Atos. Not all right. Yep, holding in Seb. Jirax nearby. He's going to get the Malpha Sun off, but that Pulse Nova damage. No Touch just cannot sustain through this. Even with the Nether Ward, Seb can't get the kill over on Zai. Mid one just rolled through, but it's Nietzsche who gets the double kill. A triple kill for the spec. He did nothing.
the work and took all the bounty. That is absolutely what you want to see if you're secret. You don't complain about that whatsoever. You don't complain that the Spectre took your kill because now we're going to have a, a Spectre coming online fast. He's going to go back for the Radiance, it looks like. Yeah. I just can't believe, you know, the, the Night Stalker, you think, oh, yeah, that sounds going to be really good against that Leshrac. Well, when he's already casted all his spells and he already has Pulse Nova activated, he didn't actually look that good. <laughs> he just tried to run down the Leshrac and just got himself killed against all that magic damage. Mm -hmm. Even with the uh, the Hood of Defiance he had. He's going to go back for the Midas OG, just not feeling like they really reached the timing that they wanted to with this push strategy. They didn't get ahead like they planned. and. But you still don't have any mage involved in these fights, so no matter how you look at it, this is the advantage of having Spec early on, right? She just Spectral Horns in is always on the front lines. Any mage cannot do the same thing. And here we go once again. Spectral Horn is down, looking for the kill over on Yamsaw. But here comes your jump through the back lines. Mid one, disarming, rooting up. They're just trying to control our pugnant so we cannot stand alive. Now the rock, it drops from Puppy and OG. They have to scramble themselves away from this one. Fatal Bonds connected everyone together. Seb is just running any mage. Okay, this is not where you want it to be. He's looking up the fight. Maybe he's wondering if he can get a good mana void onto the track, but there's nothing to have here. Just as part from a great spectator view to watch your teammates die, but is that what you really paid for? Yeah, and that's the thing, Toby. You were saying, hey, the enemy isn't part of these fights yet. I would agree with that if he had like a solid net worth advantage over this Spectre, but he's only 300 gold ahead of him. Mm -hmm. And again, the Spectre will outscale this enemy. You just, you planned on OG being able to play four versus five, but they lost the laning phase in mid so hard, and mid one continued that momentum so much that he just decimated. Yeah, OG in that transition phase outside of landing phase into into the sort of mid-game team fight that you see. Oh, they find an opening and they found the big one. The follow-up stun's actually coming in from Jirax has dominated creep. There we go. That's a big kill. That's a mega kill streak as well. So ILTW, 500 extra gold for that. Yeah, and a long time dead for for the spec. And that means so much more when any mage already has the battle fury. This is going to yeah. be a huge disparity in the farm that can now arrive. And they're going for more up on top, but this time it's team secret. Claiming the kill over on Thompson. You know, his team just executed a great gank in bottom lane. Very surprised he was aggressively showing himself so so soon after that, right? Yep. Like, Seeker got the read. Okay, there are three people. We lost Spectre. They see Thompson at top. I know he's alone. Black Hole's going to come out onto the track. Oh, but Jirax is dying right now to the Fatal Bonds too. ILTV will move over, so now he can finally burn off the last bit of mana from Zai and look for the last hit. Blinks forward. He'll need two to do it. And it's actually the Creep Wave who will claim it. Yep, so also died as well. Right next to the Radiant Shrine. So Seb gets one, split for the other. OG's bringing this back. Still 7,000 gold lead for Secret, but That's, it hasn't gotten worse. Hey, I remember game one, it was just like that. And th this is the yeah. OG special. Hey, we're really behind everybody, but let's win around the 60 minute mark and we make fans. It's the uh, it's the Director 8 kind of way. They, they're gonna reach an awkward point this 20 to 25 minute daytime, um, but they are closing in on Pipe. I'm not sure what Jarek builds for the four position Enigma against Warlock. Well, he's going uh, he's going for Mech at the moment, so he's yeah. looking he's looking to be almost like the old three position Enigma offline. Like, yeah, I think I'm just he just provides sustain. You focus on those team fight items, just because you like the last four position Enigma I saw. You know, it built BKB normal, but mm -hmm. when playing against the Warlock, you've got this just sort of one to one counter. That it's probably better for you just to focus on the team fight aspect and not. That's as uh, much as I know that's a disappointment <laughs> to you, Toby. Oh, no, it just means it's more impressive when he gets it off. Mm, and really, no one, no one likes seeing a black hole of the entire team, isn't that? I, I'm real sorry right now. Like, it's, it's, just, it's not good. <laughs> the team activity. Yeah, it really is. It's bonding. Uh, right now, Team Secret taking Roshan, bonding together. Three in the pit, two outside. Let's make it three and two split. And what a surprise with a bit of a half trade off where. Actually, OG are uncertain about this. They put down a nether ward up on the hill near the shrine. They had enemies pushing. It's like they were expecting a fight, not expecting a Roshan. Yeah. But Roshan it definitely it is. So now, yep, Spec has the Aegis Immortal. They'll uh, claim the 20 minute bounty runes and maybe another reason why they're also expecting a fight. I mean, that was very bold of them, too, Secret doing it during nighttime. Oh, Thompson. Rolling Thunder's coming out. And mid one. Right on top of the Pugner. Of course, it's the end of the Nether Ward. One second and it will time out. I think Thompson kind of understood that he was dead. 
But he kept their attention for a little bit longer, but was it long enough? Animage blinks away, so yeah, it was long enough. What Thompson did is he tried to hug the cliff as much as possible, and it both decreases the chance that Pango's going to be able to get the angle to hit you, but also when he does hit you, it means oh, that you sorry. have a chance to be able to pop up the cliff. Don't walk into this. Don't wait. Wait. Hang on. Yeah. Blink forward. Someone going to stun. Malifus. He'll go in vision, right? but it's just the Animage. cliff of cape. Uh, and wait for him to come back out of it. Now they have the extra vision. Midnight Pulse is already down, burning off the life, and okay, committal. He really wanted that kill. Anti-Mage needs money. Oh, I mean... If I'm secret, I am going to play super aggressive. Because Night Stalker's ultimate has such a long cooldown still. Two Dark minutes for Dark time. Ascension. It's daytime as well. I, I think this is time where they could easily take uh, at least one tower. You actually have Night Stalker on the end of that Dark Ascension TP to the bottom lane. And he's surrounded by four heroes. Topson's nearby. But OG, Black Hole's coming off cooldown. You can bring Enigma into this fight. And Thompson, no, he just wants to leave. It's like, you know what, Seb? This is a really, really bad idea. We should have known Team Secret were going to hunt us. And we just give away a nice stalker kill. But more than that, likely, they're going to lose their tier one and a large amount of damage to their tier two. They have to push the other way. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world because ILTW is pushing out top at that same point. So there's so many heroes now at bottom that he takes a tower, is going to try and equalize mid one very quick to rotate back because he knows he can leave his team as three or four at bottom lane. OG's not going to fight into him during daytime. So he can stop that push from the enemy. He can hunt him, pressure him, make sure he can't farm their, you know, the radiant off lane jungle. Jirax, top is going to be in that midnight pulse. Pull him back in, but the rock as well. So Fennel Bond's connecting Thompson and Jirax together. Nisha moving forward. He's got the Aegis Immortal. He wants to fight. So I'll just root up the Pugna, follow up with the stun. And there's be two heroes from OG very quickly teamed up. But then ILTW jumps in for the fight, kills off Yapsaw. But is this going to be enough for him? He's got the mana style. And no, well, actually, Mana Void is back off cooldown. Nisha has a large amount of pull they could potentially use. Does he want to jump back in? Maybe not when mid one and Nisha both diving underneath the tier two tower, looking for the kill and the supports are not rotating over. This is one very dead no tail and team secret. What was meant to just be one or two hero pickoffs has now turned into almost OG feeding him five kills in the bottom lane. But Jirax oh, says, Jirax says go. Go away? Okay, <laughs> go Please? Yep. Maybe that's what he's trying to tell his team. Oh, there's your, your Rod of Eight. Oh, to get the Anti-Mage. Sounds is out. And the Anti-Mage needs to break free. Seb's nearby. And with the Pulse Nova, ILTW has no other choice but to bling himself away to safety. And here we go, Dark Ascension again. Defensively kind of used. Trying to catch up towards mid one. But they're just backing off with the Observer Warden Sentry. OG had a lot of extra information. They know that Nisha was kind of left alone. They need to keep this fight going, but it's really difficult to do because they know Team Secret could have just TP'd themselves over the shrine, which is pretty much what happened. So Seb caught yeah, lollygagging around and he just has to run back. He's heading to a shrine. He has an Aegis. Like, you cannot chase that at this point. It does mean you've used your Dark Ascension. Another minute and a half where Secret are, are free to kind of do whatever they want. Uh, I really like Sai's choice of the Boots of Travel. I feel like that was kind of an underrated item in previous patches. We're seeing a lot more of it as time goes on. The the sick opportunity for you to be able to uh, push into a tier three and any mage is going to split push you, you're, you're able to TP back with oh, the TP scroll and then join your team after you defend with Boots of Travel. He couldn't TP out, got rid of Vatos. Zai will keep walking with him. All those conversions are just money for him. It was Spectral Danger. You find a kill at Thompson at the same time. And that was over in the mid lane, mid one. Almost doing it solo. Yep, so was there to help out. He's got a Diffuser Blade now. That is, that is going to be really good. Animage does have, uh, surprisingly, some mana issues as well uh, when you're faced up against some of these Diffuser Blade heroes. So it's going to be great, not just against everybody on OG, but are leaving work again. No, mid one and Zai, like, I, this is a lot of confidence. They're in very, very deep. And you already got the route into the back line, so trouble Spectral Haunt. Of course, you're never alone, are you, when Spectre's on the field. Seb wants to try and walk away, but they're all over him like a hot rash. Down he'll go, and OG, four players pushing up the daisies. Look, the fertilizer will kick in. They'll come back to life in just a second, but OG, they need everyone alive. Their tier three towers now under attack. Yeah, with Garden Greaves, like, this is exactly the kind of hero that you want to be able to play with a Spectre, a hero that's not necessarily going to get bursted down if they choose to, to be able to jump you real quickly. That's not like OG has that kind of initiation or burst anyway. Nice hooker buyback. 
The black hole is available if they want to try and use it. Have to go up the hill, but Jirix is copying so much damage. They're draining out the life of Nisha. Any main trying to protect himself with a spell block shield. Gets over towards Yapsol. Triggers the mana star breaking free with the mana void. The damage is a good spell damage for the rock in the back line. Jirix was never part of this one. Same for potentially the anti mage who was trying to be safe under the tier three tower. No way to jump away, but he's got a spell block available and also Enchantress. Heavy damage in design, making him think twice about coming up. But you do not have your Nysaur, you do not have your Enigma. What have you really got? You've got time. No Tail's creating it on the top. Poppy's already got himself a double kill over on this Warlock. And they're gonna get more. Burn off the manor of mid one. One charges are available. He'll blink up. The Rolling Thunder oh, no. started from Panga, but it was a bait. ILTW thought he was gonna get in the middle of this one. He had to jump away. This ball block is not controlling him. Mid one just rolls through him. And they're rolling through OG here in game two. But the black hole is a beautiful thing. I love it. I love it. But really. It's, it's uh, what do we say, Cap? What did we say about black holes with no team? Team activity, Toby. You got to get everybody in there. Unfortunately, there was nobody left from the, the OG to put damage. The corpses in. were the only thing that's, that's in true. there. Unfortunately, black hole doesn't have that kind of regenerative effect. And it didn't even kill mid one. Dropped super low, but unfortunately, midnight pulse wore out. That's gonna be one lane of Rax, and it's a Spectre as well. God, yeah, this is Pango. It's worked. It made me real happy. I'm gonna tell you that much. <laughs> well, you're a pango picker, aren't I'm you? I'm a pango picker, baby. And once I saw people start playing at mid, I was I, I watched mid ones replay real closely on that. And I was like, damn, that's sick. I could be a mid player again, Toby. On one hero, <laughs> I could be a mid player. Oh, Seb, not where he wants to be. Caught in a very huge slow. The upheaval making it almost impossible to walk away, Thompson. Is giving him a little bit of extra protection and now has to actually give him the life as well. Seb, no way, not enough life. Maybe one wants to go in a little bit deeper. They need something to fight with. Two lanes of racks have already been claimed by Team Secret. At least Rolling Thunder will go on cooldown for a minute so OG can feel a little bit more confident in the fights, but still underneath Radiance, anyways, it's just not ready to fight. These lucky shots are able to connect, tries to protect himself with the counter spell. Mid one is bone drive managed, got three one charges that won't be enough to give him the swashbuckle away to safety. So maybe they get some revenge. In fact, it is, it's No Tail who gets the godlike 10 time streak over a thousand gold, goes into no the tail, Enchantress. No. And now Nisha, they want more, they're jumping forward. Jirax is just body blocking if they don't want the spec to get down the hill, but they can't body block when you got no mover speed. So anyway, he jumps forward, he's able to actually get one little quick hit in towards Nisha, but Yapsaw's nearby to help him out too. The golems are being sent in. Oh, they need more in. stones. And now you now know the golems actually evaporate underneath Zai. The fatal bonds, four heroes, all connected together. This is Zai's field day. It is all about the palace for him. Drain out the life, get rid of the Latrak, and RNG, they actually be fighting. Team Secret losing two very large cores. And this day of the game, OG will one, take everything they can, and two, they'll take the money. Oh, if only they could have got that Spectre, but Tank, they walked away from it. A, a decent fight. Oh, man, I can't believe though. No Tail got the last hit. I just remembered that. Maybe it wasn't so good. If only Anti Mage could have gotten that last hit, maybe it would have been sick. Yeah. But what, what does No Tail buy? It's like, hey, guys, I can afford us wards now. Yeah, yeah that's support, a lot of centuries. Supports are people too. Yeah, I don't think he's making the transition into core, even with that thousand gold boost. So, uh, unfortunately, it is what it is. Seb came in just in time with that pipe towards the end. That was a really sick Fatal Bond. So you, you said it at the very start of the draft. It was like, that's a really sick combination. Fatal Bonds does apply with how it works is it applies the same damage type. So when someone comes in, the way say like a pipe, yeah. it works really well to be able to counter both the Leshrac as well as the Fatal Bonds combo and all that extra. He managed to bail out at least Jarek. The big man spawning. <laughs> Poor Thompson, though. He's behind Crystal Maiden in net worth. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, he, I can't he's... remember the last time I saw Thompson have this hard of a game. Oh, goodbye, Dartel. He's the one on the lowest net worth. Picked off instantly by his back. There is no delay here. It's like, I need to be alive. You've still got an any mage, so you still have hope. That's, that's, that's the way this works, right? I, I have to wonder, like, I'm thinking back in the laning phase, it's like, Maybe they should have put like Night Stalker in mid and then Pugna into the, the Spectre lane that's, or that's, something. That's a, that's a lot of what ifs. Yeah. There is Spectral Horn oh. reveals all of them and they're in a great position. The Fatal Bonds are rock three together. OG, not what they want to have happen for.
Four heroes spent. <laughs> no, it's going to be four. It's only going to be three. Seth gets hit by the Rolling Thunder of mid one. Look where Notel actually hides. He knows this will be a dieback for him if he goes down. And it's actually Anti Mage. Okay, maybe I can kill off mid one. Maybe I can have the money and all the solo experience that goes with it. Or maybe I can just die. Zai is going to be there. I'll land the stun. Turns on the pulse. No, but this is the game. Everyone from OG is dead. GG is the call. OG, they started off ESL 1 Katowice and nicely with a game one victory against Team Secret in what was a fun style. Secret gave an opening in game one. In game two, it seems like no opening existed. Yeah, Secret wanted to remind OG, <laughs> you may have won TI, but we're the dominant team right now. And we'll show you exactly what a dominant victory looks like. 28,000 gold lead by 30 minutes.